we can create machines that will fool people or convince people that they are human-like in nature, but that doesn't mean that they are truly human-like. Robots, to me, should be allowed to become robots. All right, welcome back everyone to Future Summit of Man and Machine. We're going to begin our discussion now on robotics. And I want to start with Daniela Serki, a cultural and social anthropologist. I was reading an article that quoted you as saying, and I'll just read it to you, that there will eventually be a merger of machine and human intelligence, the next species of humankind. What's that going to look like? Uh, as an anthropologist, I think that we have to stand back and wonder why we are doing what we are doing. And one aspect very important is, um, I think we are trying to increase uh, the speed in accessing information. In this um, uh, sense, brain-to-brain -brain communication and brain-to-machine communication are valued. So the best way to do it is merging directly with machine, and I really think it's the last step we have to, to achieve. Dangers in that? Of course, in my view, there are dangers, but depending on how much you like humankind. <laughs> As an anthropologist, I love humankind, I'm, and some could say I'm too human-centered. It might be true, but I, I think we should think um, about what we are doing, because uh, there are people pr uh, arguing that we should merge and evolve into a new species because complexity must increase. And I think that this evolutionary argumentation is not very fair because we are using it to justify what we are doing. Because I think that there are many species disappeared, extinct, but it was despite, and it's still despite, um, a preservation instinct. And we are the first species working on its own extinction, mm. and I, it amazes me. That's interesting. <laughs> that, 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 that's interesting, uh, uh, Joanne. But we're we're mm. evolving. It's not like man and machine. I think we're merging. I think all of us have some technological augmentation. It's not going to be them versus us. And I, I think we're merging. And the benefits of, of technology. I mean, now we're we're so dependent on computers and. Y y some of us were contact, some of us had more direct technological I I advancements in our bodies. It's, it's not going to be just an extinction, it's going to be an involvement in, in, in order to better our lives. I, I know that, I know that uh, we've got a couple of people in the audience who have questions. I want to go to one of the questions about robotics. Let's see, tell us your name and, and what your question is. Hi, I'm Shireen Go. My question is, um, we now know of many different kinds of robots which will benefit society, but what kind of robots should we not build? Ah, Thank you. now that's a question. Uh, how about Alan Coleman? Well, I think that anything goes as long as the robot is only going to do what we consider a lawful human activity, with some exceptions. I mean, I don't think I could get amorous with a robot, but <laughs> most other things... That are <laughs> I'm not that desperate. <laughs> uh, uh, Jay Keasley, you got a thought? Uh, I was just going to mention law enforcement. I might be a little cautious about having robots doing law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. But do, you, do you think that uh, but if, the, if the robot is going to do the gardening for me, bring me a, my breakfast in bed, uh, that's a good thing. But do you think there needs to be limits then set? I, I, I think that there is no good robot or bad robot. The, uh, for example, if we are involved in car accident the, with the uh, life casualty, then who is responsible for that? People, the, no, no, no one will say that the automobile itself is responsible for that. The uh, drivers or manufacturers or the um, servicemen may have some responsibility for the accident. So same thing will happen for the robots. Ah, so the then, robot then, is the robot. But then we've got to talk about whether we're going to have controls on how we do it. Hubo, what do you think? You got a question? Oh, he raised his hand. Well, hello, but do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> Why do human beings worry about robots? I think, and I, I don't want him to take it personally, <laughs> um, I you think that <laughs> I noticed that you talked about him, you didn't say oh, it, you sorry. said he. So you're the reason why I'm also saying <laughs> he, but I noticed it. It's very interesting with an anthropological view. Um, and it's exactly what I mean. We have built them as our creators. So I think it's a big paradox because on the one hand, we love them because we love them as our children. We, we are 
as gods, we create life. But on the other hand, we are afraid because we think they can steal our human prerogative because we have built them uh, in our likeness. So they should be able to do it. Interesting thought. We'll keep that thought. Robotic technology is dramatic in and of itself. So what happens if you use that same type of technology inside the human body? We just touched on that. Let's look more. It is the ultimate synthesis of man and machine. I think we are, will be putting more and more robotic technology inside us. Uh, you know, robotic joints, replacement limbs. Um, a lot of people now, over 100,000, have cochlear implants with direct neural connections into their cochlea from a computer so that they can hear. Doctors using cutting-edge technology to heal. There will be a day when amputees are wired up electrically. They're wired up mechanically, and it's really a part of their body, even though aspects of the prosthesis may still be synthetic. So in that world, amputees will not only be able to walk across a sandy beach, but will actually feel the sand against their synthetic foot. And researchers using that same technology to open direct communication between the brain and computers. One of the big breakthroughs in neuroscience is that we can tap into those signals and we get many complex electrical impulses from those neurons, yet we can read out those signals and uh, by some not too complex mathematical techniques, we can put them back together in a way that we can interpret what the brain is, is trying to do. A lot of our industrial infrastructure is going to rely more on biological materials so we're going to start building robots out of biological materials while well, we're putting silicon and steel inside ourselves. And then what's a robot, what's us, is going to start to get a bit messy. You're not going to be able to walk into a room in 2035 and say, okay, humans on the left side of the room, machines on the right. You'll have a hard time finding a human that doesn't have extensive amounts of technology inside them in the form of nanobots and other systems that are keeping them healthy and also extending their range of experiences and, and their intelligence. Uh, fascinating stuff there. If Ray Kurzweil is right, what will it be like to be alive and full of technology? What will it mean to be human? Stay with us, we're going to discuss that when we come back. <laughs>